he never lost his inner child. When I met him, I, I noticed that. He was a very down-to-earth guy. He wasn't a theoretician. I mean, he, like any one of us, if you, if you scratch the surface, will spout a bunch of theories. But his theories were all expressed in his work. They were all on the screen. That's all you really need to know about the guy, is to look at the films and just um, immerse yourself in them. Stylistically, the great Japanese films that we've seen, from uh, Ozu to Kurosawa, uh, and with many other examples along the way, Oshima, th their films are composed in the classic way, the classic Japanese way of a one sort of a basic shot per scene that almost never varies. It's from a low angle, usually, like someone sitting on the floor. The compositions are carefully uh, framed, carefully lit, and often the camera doesn't move. It does on rare occasion. It moves only to follow somebody who's entering or leaving the frame, and often we'll just let them enter or leave the frame without moving. And these are the, this is the style of the great Japanese printmakers. Um, uh, Fukusaku's work is uh, it's very much like um, the American films of the 70s that either may or may not have been influenced by them. The camera's constantly moving. The, the um, action is visceral. He tries to put you in the middle of the action. He, uh, very often, it goes from uh, handheld, very visceral filmmaking into an, a kind of operatic style, and um, which is extremely unusual. He mixed styles, all I believe in an attempt to deeply immerse the audience in the experience of the story. You feel as though you are inside the frame rather than outside the frame looking at a painting. You're not outside looking in. You are often very much within the frame. And that's a style that the filmmakers of the 70s picked up and, and sort of ran with. French Connection could very easily have been done by Fukusaku. Uh, and I, wasn't, I was never thinking about his work when I did the film. I was trying to tell that story. But the visceral approach to the story, I know, um, it, it wasn't just inspiration. I had seen his work and I saw how it was useful in telling a story like that, a crime story as he would put it. Uh, it was useful to have the camera constantly following the people and more importantly to not be making any judgments about these characters. He wasn't worried about happy endings. He didn't have to redeem the good guys. He didn't have to say that the good guys triumphed at the end. And that was a profound influence on me. You can't do that today in American film. Audience has have to be totally clear as to who the good guy is, who the bad guy is, and there's no variations. It's gotten to a point even where they're comic book characters. Comic book heroes, comic book villains. But in the uh, Fukusaku universe, the great films of his, he had no judgment about the characters. The heroes were, were not always triumphant. So they had much more of a um, relationship to actual life. And I, I really believe that there, most people, all people, are made up of good and bad and that it's a constant struggle within us for our better um, natures to triumph over our inner demons. Well, the, that, the Battles Without Honor and Humanity is just about the best series of films of its kind. Uh, it embodies so much of world cinema that has dealt with this subject matter. It's like saying, why would you tell a writer, for example, to read James Joyce's Ulysses? Because it's a quarry for writers. In that book, you can find techniques, attitudes, approaches, language, everything you need to be a writer. Uh, for a filmmaker, 
you can look at battles without honor, and you can um, be immediately influenced to make films yourself and want to go out and not imitate that, but do something else that's of the same value or quality about the world that's around you. And for an audience, they're just very entertaining. You, they're unpredictable, they're highly original in their approach to subject matter, even though the subject matter is not original. Uh, but the approach is original and the, the techniques are completely unexpected. Most of the films you see that are made today by Hollywood are so predictable and in, in style as well as content. Originality is in short shrift. And in Fukusaku's films, it's, they're, they're completely original to this day. And that's why they inspire. You know, the, works like that are as valuable as written histories. They're, they're kind of visual histories of, um, of the way the society was in various periods. The great filmmakers, like Fukusaku certainly was, um, both reflected their time and they were prophetic about what was to come. But clearly they started with a, with a, uh, a base of reflecting what they saw. They became what they beheld. And so he made a lot of films about bizarre crime and, and murder and casual death because that was a constant in his everyday life. Some people just went crazy. Others, a lot died by just being there. He was one of those who was able to turn this chaos and degeneration into art. He um, was a teacher. He enjoyed talking about his films uh, in, in the way that a great teacher enjoys talking about certain theories of art or music or whatever. It's harder to talk about film because most film says it all. What you see is what it's about. But the works of the great filmmakers, that's not necessarily so. There are many underlying ambiguous themes at work that you have to search for. And I tried when I interviewed him to get at some of those things. There was a slight language barrier, but I found that I was talking to a colleague. Uh, I, I knew that the man was a master, but he, it wasn't as though you were talking to somebody who had an, an exalted vision of himself. He thought of himself, as most of us do, as workers, people who work in this industry, in which the director is no different than the makeup artist, or the camera person, or the sound uh, recordist, or the actor, or anybody. It is a gigantic sort of fraternity, where there may be one person's ideas that inform the enterprise, but it's, film is about collaboration. There are many hands and ideas that go into it. And he spoke a little bit about that, how a lot of the ideas in his films came from people on the crews that he worked with, who had worked with him for many years. And one of the things that I share is my enjoy, in my enjoyment of filmmaking is the interaction with artists and technicians that you respect uh, and that you draw from, the people that you're working with. He felt the same thing. I felt a very strong kinship with him.